in Seminole State, we were looking at this uh, at, at this Excel uh, problem of uh, doing the Fibonacci sequence and looking at different starting values with the Fibonacci sequence. And let me uh, let me just uh, refresh uh, refresh you on how that works. And that we start off with two initial values. Let's call them uh, x zero equals 0 and x1 equals 1. And then we generate the next value, which I'll call x2. Uh, x2 is just equal to the sum of these two values. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Then x3 is the sum of these two values. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. x4 is 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, and so on. And we keep on going on forever. And then what um, I suggested that, uh, that we look at is as we go on down here, and let's say we eventually get to uh, xn and xn plus 1, that we look at the ratios of successive terms in the sequence. In particular, we might look uh, at xn divided by xn minus 1, and we look at xn plus 1 divided by xn, and xn plus 2 divided by xn plus 1. And we found that if we look at these ratios, that in the limit, as we go to infinity, that uh, it, we have a, a constant. In other words, as n, as n gets larger and larger and larger, we look at the ratio of successive terms in the Fibonacci. It, it uh, uh, approaches a value and stays at that value no matter how far we go out on the on the series. Then I suggested we do this again and we try two different starting points. Let's say we try x n equals thirteen and x0 is 13, and x1 is uh, um, 9. And then we go through the Fibonacci algorithm again. Generate x2, which is 9 plus 13, which is 22. x3, 9 plus 22, which is 31. And we go on with this down, and we look at the values of xn plus 1 divided by xn. And we found that this limit here, as we go farther and farther out, that, this, that the, there is a limit to this ratio. It approaches a constant value. Now, what is perhaps surprising is that this constant value that we get for this sequence is the same as the constant value for this sequence over here on the left. So both of those sequences we look at the ratios, and they approach the same value. And uh, in fact, that value is uh, called the golden ratio. But we so we get the golden ratio no matter what our starting points are on the Fibonacci sequence. So how can we show that that's true all the time? No matter what the starting values are, we end up with the golden ratio. So let me... Uh, let me show you why that's true. Suppose now I say, okay, I want to look at xn plus 1 divided by xn, and I want to look in the limit of this as n goes to infinity to find out what that is. I'll just call that number L. Uh, well, let me put in the formula for xn plus 1 based on the Fibonacci sequence. So I can write xn plus 1 is equal to x, uh, xn plus xn minus 1. So this becomes this. And I want the limit as this thing goes to infinity, right? Now let's look at this term right here, this one right here. I have xn divided by xn plus xn minus 1 divided by xn. So this becomes xn over xn plus xn minus 1 over xn. And of course, xn divided by xn is going to be 1. So then this becomes 1 plus xn minus 1 over xn. 
So I have this right here. Now, so what do I have? I have that this is equal to L, goes to L in the limit, as n goes to infinity. Now this right here, this is the same thing as, write it as 1 plus 1 divided by xn divided by xn minus 1. Okay, And then I said this goes to L in the limit. Now in the limit, as this thing goes to infinity, of this expression right here, the limit of 1 is 1, so this goes to 1 right here, and this is 1 over xn divided by xn minus 1. Now, the limit of this term as n goes to infinity is exactly the same as the limit of this term as n goes to infinity. In other words, I have the limit as xn plus 1 divided by xn. That's two successive terms in the sequence. As n goes to infinity, I say that goes to L. And down here, xn divided by xn minus 1 is also two successive terms in the sequence. So that limit's going to L2, or should I say L also. So we have in the limit, as n goes to infinity, this thing becomes 1 plus, oh, I already have a plus there, plus 1 over L. And I said this then has to be, um, let me erase that, that this limit also, ah, come on, why is it not liking this? That that limit must also go to, uh, I mean, here I know what I need to do there. That this limit also goes to L. Okay, so this is going to L, and then I look at this particular expression, and I get 1 plus 1 over L. So I have that the limiting behavior that the limit value L has to satisfy this expression. 1 over 1 plus, uh, 1 plus 1 over L is equal to L. So what value of L solves this expression? Multiply both sides by L. I get L plus 1 equal L squared. Uh, bring everything over to the same side of the equation. I get L squared minus L minus 1 is equal to 0. And now I need to solve that quadratic equation. Well, we know how to solve that. We use the quadratic formula. So I use the quadratic formula here. I get minus b, which becomes l, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's l squared, minus 4ac. 4ac, a is 1, and c is negative 1, so minus 4ac is, uh, is plus 4. And I divide it by 2a, and a is 1. So this divided by 2. So this, then, um, is, the, uh, is, is the solution. I'm sorry. I, I, sh I, uh, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. There. I wrote that down. Minus b is 1 plus or minus 1 plus or minus the square root b squared is 1, uh, minus 4ac is plus 4, all divided by 2a is 2. So these are the solutions. So I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Uh, 1 minus the square root of 5 is negative, so that just can't be one of the answers to the limit of the sequence because the sequence is always positive. So I get 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. This has got to be the limit uh, of the ratio of the two successive terms in the Fibonacci sequence as the length of the sequence goes to infinity. So that's it. That's the answer. Uh, and uh, you can evaluate that and see if it's the same answer that we got on the spreadsheet.